The swamp is in full control as far as uh, we're all concerned, right? Both sides. So who's uh, the swamp? Money. So there's a president yeah. part of the swamp now? Is that what you believe? Uh, no, he couldn't get what he wanted done. You don't blame him for being frustrated and saying, why should I trust the Republican leadership? They couldn't deliver, so I'm going to work with these guys? No, I wouldn't go that far, but I'm just saying the swamp is winning, right? In terms of the forgotten man. It's Congressman Dave Bratt, a Freedom Caucus member who defeated House Majority Leader Eric Cantor in 2014, speaking with Chuck Todd yesterday. Now the Washington Post reports that members of the Freedom Caucus are weighing a challenge to Speaker Paul Ryan. The paper says that for weeks, the group's leader, Congressman Mark Meadows of North Carolina, has been meeting with ousted White House Chief Strategist Steve Bannon at the Capitol Hill office of Bannon's website, Breitbart. In conversations with friends and associates, Bannon has reportedly described the potential move against Ryan as the beginning of a war against the Republican establishment. And with us now is the aforementioned chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, Republican Congressman Mark Meadows. Good to have you on board. Thank you. It's great to be with you. Thank you. Have you been having those meetings with Steve Bannon? And does Paul Ryan need to go? No, I, I can tell you, I, I've had conversations with Steve Bannon, uh, Wright's Priebus, both within the last uh, 48 hours or so. And I can tell you that we're laser focused not on a leadership change, but making sure that we change Washington, D.C. Uh, yesterday, we had a meeting with the speaker in a cross-sectional meeting, which brings in all the leadership of the different caucuses, probably the best cross-sectional meeting we've had. But it's all about making sure that we change it on behalf of the American people. So a lot of the focus is on leadership. Really where the focus needs to be is on doing what we've said we would do, and that's delivering on the Trump agenda to make sure that we give Washington, D.C. back to its rightful owner, and that's what we're committed to do. Joe. So, so uh, Congressman, um, do, do you feel like the president betrayed the Freedom Caucus? Do you feel like the president betrayed conservatives with his deal with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer yesterday? Uh, no, I, you know, really, the president wasn't given a whole lot of options. You know, Joe, you, you've been here. You know how this place works. Right. Uh, I understand you would have been a Freedom Caucus member before there was a Freedom Caucus member, so we'll give you an honorary <laughs> membership, Joe. Well, but, it, except uh, for the fact, you guys, you guys are a little moderate for me, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, Joe. So as we look at this, you know, here's the thing is, is because of the hurricane relief, there wasn't a whole lot of options. Right. You know, when, when you look at this, you either had an 18-month clean debt limit or you had what was agreed to, a three-month clean debt limit. And so uh, when given two bad options, uh, obviously you can't be too critical of anybody, but I can tell you what... What it was, was really our grassroots are very confused. They're saying, well, is this the president going to cut deals with Democrats from here on out? And I would suggest that that's not the case. Uh, and that's based on talking not only to the president, but also talking to Speaker Ryan and others. Uh, this was a unique situation because of the devastation in Texas. Hopefully we can put right. forth some conservative ideas soon, Joe. So obviously the frustration, Mark, has to do a lot with the president, has to do with the fact that Republicans have promised to repeal Obamacare for seven years, and they weren't able to get the votes to do it in their own caucus. Uh, Alex, our EP, put together a clip of some things we've been saying around the table for the past four months, and I want you to tell me how Republicans get past this problem. Go ahead and run the okay. clip. Sure. The more they gave to the Freedom Caucus, the more they were going to lose from mainstream Republicans. The Freedom Caucus is not going to support an expansion of Medicaid. But in the Senate, good luck getting the Republican Senate to support anything that guts the Medicaid portion of this bill. It's just not going to happen. Whatever the Senate passes with Democrats is going to lose the Freedom Caucus in the House. They wanted to go further right. There is no way Mitch McConnell's Senate would ever pass that in a billion years. So, uh, Mark, if you didn't have a monitor, that's me with a lot of different ugly hairstyles and a lot of ugly jackets, basically saying well, the same thing, which is the further, especially on Medicaid, that's, that's where the rubber hits the road. If Medicaid is, is expanded, it's really tough for guys like you and other people in the Freedom Caucus to support it. So the question is, instead of meeting with Bannon, shouldn't you be sitting down with Lisa Murkowski and John McCain and Susan Collins and say, okay, 
Do we want to figure this out? Or do we want Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer to figure this out? Well, so maybe breaking news right here on two fronts. One, your hairstyle is certainly better than Trey Gowdy, so we'll give you that. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> that is damning with faint praise if I've ever heard it. <laughs> but we'll, we'll go with the second part of that. And, and one of the interesting things is the only thing that has passed the House was actually something that was worked on with more moderate members with the Freedom Caucus. You know, Tom MacArthur and I coming together to put something forward that we passed out of the House. And as it relates to Medicaid and working on some of those issues, I probably have had a meeting with, with no less than 12 different senators. Uh, the most promising thing right now, uh, Joe, is, is uh, Senator Lindsey Graham and Senator Cassidy working on a block grant issue that it deals with that Medicaid portion. It actually doesn't repeal all the taxes, but it gives power back to the states, allows uh, most of the states, if not all of the states, uh, to do better on that Medicaid portion. And so even though that may be the narrative that plays out and plays real well with, with some of your viewers, I can tell you that it doesn't match the facts here on the ground. I, I was working on Medicaid expansion issue with Steve Daines probably six months ago. And so it's all about, yes, coming together and make sure that we do it. But yes, my, my district is very different different than perhaps uh, Lisa Murkowski state or Susan Collins state. Uh, but in that give and take, you, you got to find the sweet spot. I'm optimistic that we right. can still do that, but time is running out. Congressman Meadows, it's Willie Geis. Good to see you this morning. Let me ask you some more about Speaker Ryan and those meetings you've had with him this week. I know you like him a lot. I know you respect him, so we can get that out of, the, out of the way. But as a speaker trying to push through a conservative agenda, do you believe that Paul Ryan has been an effective speaker of the House? Well, I think here, here's the interesting thing is, is as an effective uh, speaker, the only thing that you can judge that on is the results. One, right. one of my favorite quotes is, no matter how beautiful the strategy, we must occasionally look at the results. And the results uh, and the time remaining for that jury to make a, a judgment call on those results is running out. So we've got about uh, two or three months to make real decisions. I believe the speaker is up to the task. I know members of the Freedom Caucus and the Tuesday group and every group in between is willing to work with him on that. But we have to do that and make sure that we put things on the president's desk. I can tell you, my constituents don't understand why we didn't have a repeal and replacement bill on the president's desk on January 20th. Uh, we've been talking about it for a long time. So it's all about making decisions, so. getting, uh, you know, really getting that time frame uh, right. shortened. And I'm hopeful, based on a meeting even as recent as yesterday, yeah. that we will do that. So, Congressman, when you talk about results, there haven't been results. That seems to be the implication. Right. He's got a couple more months to get something done, does Speaker Ryan. Is the reporting accurate that you and members of your group in the Freedom Caucus have been putting out feelers for a new speaker? The names Newt Gingrich and Rick Santorum even put out. Are you all looking to recruit a new speaker? I, I can tell you, there's no plan, there's nothing there, and I can, I can tell you if that I was working on a plan uh, to depose the speaker, you wouldn't be reading about it in the press. And so, I, you know, at this point, the, the American people could care less who the leaders are of the Republican Senate majority or, or in the House. They care about one thing, getting things done. Uh, and to that end, uh, it's not just about the speaker's job, it's about my job. If we don't get it done, we're all going to be sent home. Home, so it's critical that we deliver on those campaign promises. Well, I just have to, John Heilman, I just have to correct one thing, uh, one caveat to what the congressman said is somebody who did actually uh, work uh, with a group of people to depose a speaker. Uh, several years ago, uh, <laughs> you would be reading about it in the press if Lindsey Graham were in your group because we'd have top <laughs> secret meetings to depose Newt Gingrich and Lindsey would invite the press and they'd be standing outside and they go, this is a secret meeting, Lindsey. He goes, well, but, but I don't I know. Can, I can tell so, you, on any time that I've been involved, you haven't read about it in the press until after it's happened. So uh, we'll, uh, well, but, that's, but that's, point well taken. That, that's, but that's because Lindsey Graham's not in your group. I mean, that explains it. But John Heilman has a question for you. Co Congressman, sure, John. The, Congressman, it seems like one of the, uh, maybe the centerpiece of <laughs> the getting things done agenda over the course of the coming months is going to be tax reform. I'm curious what right. your broad thoughts are about what that bill should look like and if there are any non-negotiable items, things that must be in that bill for you and your uh, colleagues in the Freedom Caucus to be satisfied. 
Well, we had a meeting at the West Wing yesterday. We also had a, a meeting with the speaker yesterday. And I, in terms of lines in the sand, we've got to be very, very aggressive in our corporate rate. So if we're looking at a corporate rate of 25%, that's a non-starter for, for most of us. We have to make sure that the hardworking American taxpayers, that they get the break too. So not just special interest groups, we need to make sure that those that uh, moms and dads that need to put money back in their pocket, that it actually actually flows through to them. And lastly, I think the biggest part of that is making sure that we're competing globally to make sure that that, that base erosion, as you would call it, where multinationals are not going abroad, that they're creating good paying, high paying jobs here in the United States. All of those things are principles, but I don't know that we're that far apart in, in talking both to our leadership and, and the, uh, the leadership in, in the West Wing. Uh, we're very close. Uh, the, real, the real fly in the ointment right now is, is making a decision and getting the Senate on board. Uh, hopefully we can do that in the coming weeks. Con okay. Congressman, we always appreciate how calm you are and how smooth, <laughs> but I'm just totally baffled. Why are you not freaked out or are you secretly freaked out by the president striking a deal with Chuck or Schumer Irk, and Nancy Pelosi? Street. No, freaked yeah. out. How could this not freak you out? That your friend, a guy ran as a Republican, is now handed a huge amount of leverage on major spending issues and immigration issues to Nancy Pelosi and Chuck well, Schumer. How could that not, how could you not well, be here in, in a freaked out mode? I don't get it. Well, I, I don't get freaked out about much of anything. What it's incumbent upon me is to come up with a plan to make sure that, that I get back in control of the situation. So obviously, is December 15th or December 8th, the date that was cut, a negotiating disadvantage for me without a doubt? Does it concern me? Sure, it concerns me. But the other part of that is, is the unique situation. Remember, in order for anything to come through, it has to be brought to the floor with the Speaker of the House or the Leader of the Senate. In this situation, you had hurricane relief that would prompt a bill that would normally not be supported by conservatives in the House being brought forth. I don't see that happening. If there is another superstorm or something like that in December, perhaps it creates a, a different issue. But right now, I think that this is more of a one-off than a, a trend that we're going to be looking at going forward. Congressman Mark Meadows, thank you, and we understand that today is your anniversary, so we appreciate your coming in today. Congratulations. Right. Very thank nice. You. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.